Let's look at more foreign policy disasters from uh, the Biden administration, day six or whatever it is. Uh, uh, he's already endorsed Juan Guaido of Venezuela. Who's Juan Guaido? If you missed my video last week and, and all of the other videos and podcasts I've done um, in regards to Venezuela, Juan Guaido is the fake president that America has endorsed, the Trump administration endorsed, uh, that there's a bipartisan endorsement of. And Joe Biden just agreed to endorse him. And not just agreed, he, he did endorse him. Now, a bunch of the world, I mean, a majority of the world, does not see Juan Guaido as the rightful leader of Venezuela. They, they look at Nicolas Maduro and they say, well, yeah, they had a legitimate election and Nicolas Maduro won. And Nicolas Maduro does not want to give America a bunch of oil because, yeah, he was, he's, he's from uh, you know, the same line of thinking as Chavez, who America also hated. Um, regardless of what you think of Venezuela, to, to dictate who is and isn't the leader of a foreign country is not America's place. And vice versa, right? That's that's the argument. That's what Russiagate was all about. Oh my God, a foreign country is is put you know put a, a leader in place. That's what that Russiagate conspiracy theory was all about. So if that is an outrage, then the liberals should be outraged by what Joe Biden is doing right now with Venezuela. He's supporting a coup. And he's showing the world that he's pro coup, right? He goes on television and he, and he, and he reams out the, the, the uh, storming of the Capitol, right? The, the, the coup that happened at the Capitol on January 6th, but he supports the coup of Venezuela. Huh. Are you pro coup or anti coup? Oh, are you, are you just anti coup when it happens to, to, to monoliths of American oligarchy? Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see. America first, right? America first. It's such a, this hypocrisy is such a blatant disrespect to the people of Venezuela. Blatantly disrespecting them. Again, this is a this is a bipartisan effort. This is something that Trump also did. So he is he is you know supporting a um, a Trumpian philosophy, if you will. Uh, Trump supported the and then sort of Pelosi. I mean, she fucking sprung up out of her chair when Trump introduced her at the introduced Juan Guaido at the State of the Union address. It was, it was so gross. <laughs> So like, you know those cartoons where uh, the ejector button is like a spring that launches people out of the seat through the roof of whatever vehicle or whatever. Like I think Nancy Pelosi wishes that she had that uh, when when Guan Guaido's name was said because she shot up out of the chair so quickly. Like it was like she was like she hit the ejector button and what she was hoping would happen is that she would get launched up onto the thing. And he could, and she would just fall into his arms and and uh, just you know make out with him. The Secretary of State uh, Blinken, Anthony Blinken, uh, is uh, Biden's Secretary of State now. He has basically said that he's going to ramp up economic warfare. I'm sorry, economic sanctions, which is economic warfare. Uh, on Venezuela, what did he say? He said more, more effective, more effective sanctions will be placed on Venezuela. Because here's the thing: even though there's sanctions on them, he's still been able to get like food and health care and and canceling rents uh, for his people during a pandemic. And that is, it's making America look bad. Okay, America is looking bad. We're supposed to be the greatest country in the world. And by by doing by by being the greatest country in the world, we set the example. So other countries can't do things that are better 
that America can. And America treats its working class like dog shit. Uh, and when other countries don't treat the working class like dog shit, it makes America look bad. And henceforth, they have to put, quote unquote, more effective sanctions on them uh, that forces these countries uh, to treat their uh, working class uh, like dog shit. And that's what Anthony Blinken wants to do. Oh, is this what empathy looks like? Cutting off uh, social programs in other countries that help people get food, that help people um, have a roof over their head and get health care. Is this what, getting rid of all those things, that's what empathy looks like, according to the Democratic Party, huh? Oh, man. Boy, I'm, I, I had it all wrong. I thought you were supposed to care about everybody and listen to people's perspectives and try to understand where they're coming from. You know? put yourself in their shoes. Oh, but you're only supposed to do that for people that uh, believe the exact same things you do. I'm sorry, I forgot. Selective empathy is what the Democratic Party believes in. If you're if you're a pro-Democrat, then yeah, 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 we got all the empathy in the world for you. Oh, you're not a Democrat? Then fuck you. You deserve everything awful that's ever happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it. The vitriol that, 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 that exists within this party is shown both domestically and foreign. Now, if you'll remember, there was, uh, they, Venezuela has had American economic warfare thrust upon it since 2019, at least, minimum. Uh, they basically uh, put sanctions on them so they wouldn't be able to get the income that they are owed through, uh, through their oil sales, through Citgo. So billions got locked away. Um, And not only that, um, but they also... um, Various various international shipping companies were blacklisted. That was the word I was looking for in my notes. They were blacklisted from, uh, you know, from from participating in trade because they support Venezuela. Because they were like, yeah, we're still going to get them their fucking oil. We're still going to transport it around. Could you imagine this happening in any sort of American corporation, right? Like, uh, for example, like, what if, um, what if the world said, okay, until you pull your troops out of Syria and uh, stop stealing their oil, we're gonna we're we're gonna put sanctions on America. Uh, and not, not, you know, not let um, Exxon or, or, or BP or Shell get their, uh, get their profits. We're going to lock them up. The difference is um, Venezuela ha- is more nationalized in that terms. Uh, and America is not. It's a private, private corporation, right? So I think that, but there would still be an up- uproar if they were, if, you know, across the, across the world... There's a bunch of people that were like, yeah, we're not shipping this oil. We're not supporting it. We're, and we're not giving you the revenue that you guys have earned. Uh, those are all going to get locked up. Uh, people would freak the fuck out. They would lose their fucking minds. Oh, how dare you? Uh, you, you? You can't do this to America. That's, yeah, but you can do it to Venezuela. So the, again, hypocrisy. Now, what's happening with these sanctions is, is something called collective punishment, right? By having legitimate elections and voting for a socialist that's going to help out the populace, as Maduro does, America puts economic sanctions to collectively punish its people for supporting a candidate and, and a president that it doesn't believe people should be supporting. Again, who is America to dictate what Ven- who Venezuelans should support? And Maduro is is now suing America over these sanctions um, as as crimes against humanity. He's the, uh, in the International Criminal Court. We'll see where that goes. I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, absolutely. At least make a statement by by bringing up this lawsuit to to show that America shouldn't be controlling. Uh, the uh, economics and the politics and the leadership of another country. 
And this is something Joe Biden supports. Again, same thing with sanctions in Iran, right? They can't get medical supplies that they need during a pandemic. The only way Joe Biden is going to allow them to do that is if they sign the, the, the nuclear deal. Which, fine, yeah, but why is that the caveat for getting people medicine and care that they need during a global pandemic? That should not be a requirement. You should not bend your knee to America's will in order to be able to save your people from a global pandemic. It's a hostage situation. That's, Joe Biden's foreign policy is a hostage situation. We're going to hold the citizens of other countries hostage by putting economic sanctions on them and ensuring that they can't get their basic needs. Kind of what we do in America with, uh, with health insurance and people in food lines. Now, here's the thing, right? Nicolas Maduro, when Biden was inaugurated, or right before he was going to be inaugurated, um, did come out and say, hey, look, we didn't have a good relationship with the Trump administration. For the last year and a half, they've been uh, pummeling us. Mike Pompeo wants to destroy Venezuela. John Bolton said it was part of a troika of tyranny or whatever kitschy fucking name they need to come up with to uh, manufacture consent for, for whatever kind of war that they want to wage on these countries. But maybe Joe Biden, because the way the Democrats are advertising him to be this this president of empathy and he's going to be a, a, the great uniter and he's going to bring everybody together and what a wonderful guy Joe is. Well, fine. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show good faith. And Maduro said, I hope that we can work uh, on some of the differences diplomatically. And here we are where Joe Biden is endorsing Guan Guaido. Uh, who was the same person that Trump endorsed, who is the fake president of the country. (laughs) It's comical. Like, how do people not make these connections, right? It's by defaming people like myself and Lee Camp and Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Eleanor Goldfield... Uh, Aaron Mate, Anya Parmpil. I mean, the list keeps going on and on of people that cover this stuff and expose these politicians for what they are and who they are, and and their and and their diehards, their sycophants, will trash you and discredit you and say you're you're a Trump supporter or or you don't know anything about government, you don't know how this stuff works. And it's like, yeah, I don't think you do either because you're supporting a coup, and then you hypocritically. Um, you know, uh, disavowed a, a different coup. Or like, so why why do you have this selective preference for coups? Why are you supporting an organization like the CIA, which is pro coup, when their motto is to cheat, lie, and deceive? That's their motto. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe- uh, un- unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, The dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation 
or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.